Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is part three of my keto conversation with Heavenly Fan. Now, as much as I hate to draw attention to this, there is a little bit of an audio issue in this particular video. Whenever the screen is in split screen mode, there's a slight lag on my voice. It only seems to happen on split screen. I couldn't fix it. I'm sorry. But with that out of the way, let's get on to the third and final part of my chat with Heavenly Fan. So, you've been, how long have you been running your channels now? Uh, it's over five years. Over five years. Oh, so I'm slightly longer and you have more oh, well, subscribers. I didn't realize we were in a contest, but. <laughs> of course. And my question would be, what are the, well, what, what is the most asked question or what are the most asked questions? since you it's like reoccurring i'll get like what what keto bread can i eat that's i get that all the time what, what's the what's the best actually it's no it's what's the best keto bread and then i have to ask well what are your criteria because you can have oh, i'm gonna get my fingers over here so you can see me do math um price ingredients in terms of you know how clean they are uh taste does it spike your glucose? I think those are the big four. You can pick two because that's it. Um, I've, I haven't found, I think a bread that hits on three, you know, you get something that's like, Oh, Hey, this tastes pretty good and doesn't cost much money, but the ingredients are trash and it spikes my glucose or you got, Hey, this one clean ingredients doesn't spike my glucose tastes like cardboard. So, uh, probably the most common question is what's the best bread. And then I got to go through this sort of Socratic process of de determining what's most important to them. And do they specific asking for products or, you know, I'll, I'll say homemade bread is the best, um, isn't it? Or people will say, you know, do you have a recipe for, and generally if it's a baked good, I point them elsewhere. I just, I used to bake and I used to make artisan bread and I love the way flour behaves. Flour is predictable. Yeah. Sugar is predictable. Non-keto baking is wonderful and I enjoy it immensely. Keto baking, not so much. <laughs> Nothing works the way it's supposed to work. Nothing has the same magical properties that flour has or that sugar has. And it's just been a, an exercise in frustration for me. You know, so I'm like, all right, here, go check out so-and-so's channel. And I'm like, well, what do you want most? Do you want a dessert? Do you want something sweet? Or do you want something that's more, you know, true bread like? Do you have a bread maker? How much are you willing to invest into ingredients? But uh, yeah, baking, baking is in my past. I, I think, yeah, baking is kind of the holy grail when it comes to keto cooking, isn't it? So, um, and I totally identify with that because when I first went keto, the first thing I asked myself, can I ever have another piece of bread ever again? You know, that's the kind of anxiety kind of creeping in. And uh, so one of the first um, so recipes that I made was flatbread because that was, because all my recipes is actually things I want to eat myself at the particular mm. time. And, and uh, so I have to, if I'm developing for myself, I, I, I work harder, you know? So, um, so yeah. So, so I think it's only human nature because the, the most obvious suspect when it comes to going keto is that, you know, you can't eat bread, you know, bread is the carbohydrate representative. Mm. And uh, so, the focus would be for, for me at the time and, and now ever really is, is to find, to create um, to bread recipes that can kind of, you know, um, compete, well, not compete, but, but can fulfill that need. Yes. And final thing, this is a selfish question for me. So as a content creator, I'm pretty rubbish because I would go off, you know, um, sort of missing for a few months and then come back. And, uh, and I don't know how to produce sort of my content on the reg as productive as you, what is your trick of what, or, or have you got any tips for me? Um, cause I'm trying to be more consistent for my viewers. So they don't like, you know, fear, I, I don't go, fear oh. of becoming irrelevant. Um, <gasps> you know, I had, I had taken, um, a month off like a year and a half ago, it was October of, of, uh, a year ago. So 
about a little over a year and a half ago, just, I was burnt out and took a month off and the channel has never recovered. Oh, um, wow. I'm making, uh, about a third of what I was making before then. It just, it went right off a cliff. And I think it's, you know, may, some people have said, well, you know, keto just isn't, uh, triggering the algorithm the way it used to, but the moment I take any, any sort of time off, it just, it, it resonates through the channel for a while. And I made the decision that I was going to do this full time. I was going to accept the fact that, um, I would be making a, a fraction of what I made back in corporate America. And I would find a way to make it work. You know, I would find a way to pay the bills and, um, and I have, and, but I, I do find that it's, you gotta, you gotta kind of keep going. And I, th I think the other thing too, is have, have lists always, whatever, whenever you have a thought, don't think, Oh, I'm going to remember that. I'll remember I that a as a recipe or I'll remember that as a podcast topic or yeah, that's a product I want to review. You got to write it down. Yes. And then, cause then you can always go back and be like, all right, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do this Friday? I need a cooking video. Um, the thing I got to try and probably do. So my advice for myself is, and I'm not saying I'd make great quality videos by any stretch. Um, You're successful. I, I compare like to Dennis from black tie kitchen and, you know, Dennis and I have kind of become friends uh, over the, the, the course of a couple of years. We text each other a lot and um, he puts so much effort into his videos, making them so cinematic and professional looking and storyboarding and polished. all of this stuff. And he, he burnt out. And, you know, so we haven't seen a video from him in a year and a half. And, oh. and I talked to him and I don't think I'm speaking out of, out of turn here. I, I, I know that he, there are times when he misses it. But I think he put so much of himself into it and so much into the quality of his videos that it, it became very difficult to sustain. And there are times when I look at, you know, I'll record a video, I go in thinking, oh, this should be fairly simple and fairly straightforward. And I get done and I'm like, wow, I have 50 camera shots here that I need to edit together. And then one of the things I've quit doing is trying to talk while I make food because I'll either screw up the food or I'll screw up what I'm saying. And then I'm like, okay, great. Now that's shot. So now I just focus on making the food and then I'll record a voiceover after the fact uh, that's helped. But I, I also think too, that's that very often it's what's important is, is it a good recipe Did I make something that's good and it's something that people will make and that they will put into their rotation rather than trying to get super fancy with all kinds of camera angles and stuff like that. Uh, so like this Friday's video is going to be pretty simple. It's well, I, I, I and, and it was great because I shot it. I recorded it. I did the voiceover. I edited it. I posted it. I made the thumbnail all in the course of about two hours. And no, it never happened in the history of my channel. Well, the, the thing about voiceover is so, so interesting. I used to do that in the early days and I realized I can't do that. I hate voiceover. Um, anything. Um, the only way I can do it is I talk as I do it. And a lot of people think my voice on my channel is actually voiceover. No, it's real time voice because that's, I have to talk my way through what I'm doing, probably because of, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm teaching because that's just a natural way for me to do it. And I, if I have to voice over it, you can tell because my voice that it would sound like I'm voiceover something so that that is that is really interesting and also i went through a phase of trying to produce one recipe a week that didn't last very long um i think it probably lasts about three months and i was burned out and i said well do i want to just stop doing what i'm doing because i'm so stressed first of all you have to come up with ideas and then you have to particularly with keto uh recipe vegan recipes pretty much every single recipe ha is original in some way because mm. I have invented and that requires experiments and that cannot be done in a week. So I'm not very productive as a um, um, YouTuber. So I'm a pretty rubbish one and, and I'll take that title with, with no difficulty. Um, but I do want to um, be consistent in a way, but that leads to another question I would like to ask you is that, do you watch other keto channels? 
No. Um, I don't. I don't watch other cooking channels. Here's what I watch on YouTube, and and I've had people think that I'm a, like a snob or something that I don't watch other channels. I I adore so many other keto content creators and appreciate what they do, but. I, I, it's sort of like if you're good at making Excel spreadsheets, that doesn't necessarily mean you want to watch other people make Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> you know, you're like, this is what I do. I don't need, I don't essentially want to watch other people do what I also do. And if I do, it's going to be something that I'm not going to make anyway, like baked goods. And then I'm like, okay, wow, this is cool. I'm probably not going to do this, but this is cool. And most of what I watch on YouTube falls into that category. I'll watch carpentry videos. <laughs> I'm not going to do carpentry, but I mean, I watch it and I'm like in awe of the skills that these people have. Or the, the other thing this is going to sound weird. I watch these videos of people that like they, they own a landscaping company and they'll find some house where the yard is just all run down and over. Oh, you know, and, and they me. fix it. And they're like, Hey, I, 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 so for free. I'll do this for free. I just <laughs> want to do this. I watch that. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. Like I could probably watch someone just use a power washer and like clean off playground equipment. <laughs> and, you know, to me, that's the sort of video that, that I want to watch. Um, I, I to I'm totally with you. I don't watch keto channel per se. And partially because, you know, like you said, you know, <laughs> your spreadsheet analogy. Um, I do find a lot of uh, channels that are really good, but also there's another thing reason um, is that so I can keep my hair clear so I don't get influenced and get dragged there's, you know, off track. Yeah, there's that as well. I, can, I, have, I have plausible deniability. If, <laughs> if I happen to make a recipe that's very similar to someone else's and someone <gasps> says, well, you copied from fan, I can say, no, this is just a case of, you know, great minds thinking alike. Uh, I had one recipe that I've been working on for a long time. I just called it the recipe because it was a batter that I felt could be multi-purpose. It could turn into a tortilla. It could turn into a, a lasagna a noodle, or it could be dehydrated and made into tortilla chips. And um, it was coming along and it came along to the point that I, I let Dennis from Black Tie Kitchen try it out. And he's like, oh my gosh, this is great. You know, this is really good. and then, but I, but I felt I was like 95% of the way there. And when you're creating a recipe, that's the worst place to be is 95% of the way there. That last 5% is, is so hard. But I, I had incorporated some of my paid channel members. I said, who wants to be sort of Steve's uh, keto test kitchen and try these out? You know, uh, here's my list of ingredients. Here's the amounts. And here are a couple of variations that I would like some people to try out. And one of them said, hey, I just saw a video by a ketogenic woman, and <laughs> it looks almost exactly the same as yours. Oh, like, no. One ingredient different. And I'm like, who? What? Huh? And I went over to her channel, and I opened the video, and I'm like, yeah, this is oh, dear. this is really close. Um, I had a, I had incorporated a couple of modernist cuisine ingredients that, that she didn't. But I'm like, this is so close that uh, you start to question yourself. Yeah, I'm like, I, I can't, I can't do it because it's gonna, it's gonna look like I copied her or or something. And so no, I so I, I shelved it. And it's um, probably healthier not to look around too much because the YouTube world is so trendy in in the sense that. Uh, I think that for me, if I go and start to look around, first of all, like what you said, you might realize that what you're about to produce for next week is very similar to someone else. But also, I, I don't trust myself not to be influenced by, you know, what I see. It might be inspirational, but at the same time, you start to do, oh, so that video is really getting a lot of attention. Maybe I should some, do something and, similar. And I'll do and, one of those maybe once or twice a year, like this whole cottage cheese flatbread thing, you right, know, right. Oh, I just seeing it everywhere. So I'm like, all right, I'll give it a try. <laughs> and I tried the very first recipe I saw on Google, which apparently is not the standard recipe and it didn't turn out. And then everyone's like, oh, it didn't turn out because you didn't follow the recipe. I did. I just happened to, to, to follow the wrong recipe, 
but you know, then I got the idea. Can I, can I do something to improve upon it? And, and that's, you know, that's, I like doing that because it not only allows me to give credit to someone who went before me, you know, I can say, you know, I saw this or heard about this on so-and-so's channel. I tried it out. And, you know, so then I tried this and this was my little spin on it. I would have never thought of it had it not been for this other channel. So, you know, you can kind of give credit and, you know, for the inspiration while putting your own spin on something. So, you know, I'll do that a couple of times a year, but for the most part, I'd rather just draw upon my own creativity. Yeah. And, and I think that is much healthier internally because otherwise you start to chase after something that's not, that's unpredictable. So for instance, you know, in the YouTube sphere, it doesn't matter, you know, not even keto, um, you see a lot of channels have fallen into the pitfall of just chasing the trend, thinking yeah. that it's going to produce more views. Now, which I understand, I'm not necessarily knocking that, but at some point, something is going to give if you go down that route. I'm going to answer this question from Curtis here, and then uh, it'll probably be okay. about time. Yeah. We, we were wondering if we'd make it an hour. It's been almost three. Is it this one? Uh, so how do I feel about people redoing recipes on your channel? Um, I don't care. At first I did. For me, the holy grail when I was starting keto wasn't bread, but a tortilla. I wanted a really good tortilla. And I, I developed one using um, baby corn because baby corn is mostly fiber. And uh, I created a corn tortilla that I thought was a darn good corn tortilla. but I refused to put out the video until I hit 10,000 subscribers, thinking that it's just a tiny little channel. Some other channel might take it and steal it and claim it as their own. You know, you can't, you can't copyright a recipe. It's, you know, you put it out in the public domain and it's in the public domain. I can't, you know, there have been content creators that have done certain recipes and then gotten all up into other content creators faces for using their recipe. Again, not going to name names, but <laughs> no names. Um, to me, I always try and give credit. And if, 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 even if someone was an inspiration, it may, you know, my recipe may be six different, uh, you know, degrees of separation away, but their recipe inspired me. They made me want to try this out. So I, I always try and do that. And I think one of the examples that I think is one of the most egregious examples of people not giving credit was there was a bread created by a woman named Deidre and it was called Deidre's bread. She only has two videos. I think, um, she did the bread once in a bread pan and once in a bread maker. And it was a pretty solid keto bread. And I, I went through and I did a search, all these channels, best keto bread. And I made a spreadsheet because that's what I do. I make <laughs> spreadsheets. You and made spreadsheets. Looked at all the ingredients and and saw how much you know like a number of them were direct copies you know maybe they they listed the ingredient in grams instead of in cups and tablespoons and things like that but once i did the calculation i'm like exact same recipe and they're not given deidre credit in the video and i just thought that's you know pretty pretty sleazy so i i vowed that anytime anytime someone is even a bit of an inspiration to me you know, someone throws some cottage cheese in a microwave and I'm like, oh, OK, that, you know, <laughs> keto twins. That was the inspiration for me doing, you know, the, the that was a delightful. Yes, that I did. Yes. You know, yes, it's I used a different process and, you know, some some other ingredients and stuff. But I it, the thought wouldn't have occurred to me. So I give them credit. So. That's the thing. And, and you know, I can't I can't be bothered if some, you know, if, if someone doesn't want to give me credit, if someone wants to duplicate my recipe and say it's their own, whatever, I don't care. I sort of have a slightly different view on, on recipes because um, my channel is kind of slightly in unique position because most recipes I have to kind of change so much it becomes mm. something else that I have to reinvent it to a great extent. Um, but I do see recipes as a kind of a heritage from, you know, people before us. It's kind of a woe property. It's a bit like, uh, you know, because for instance, keto fries, 
I didn't invent fries. I just used different ingredients. I didn't create the concept of fries. So I cannot claim ownership of it. And uh, so, and I kind of see that, it, you know, the only um, recipes that is direct, pretty much a direct copy was from my mom as uh, cooking. And I credited my mom for, for a, that stew, a tomato stew and tofu stew that, that, that she did, she used to make for me. Um, but I think it because the no recipe stands on their own. It, it's a it's a kind of extension from something else, unless you just invent a brand new food and then and, and perhaps you can you know have your name on it. But um, yeah, I, I'm so I'm, I'm a lot more relaxed about you know um, I, I can understand because there's so much work into developing mm. a, a recipe, and and I think it's not really fair if someone basically just, you know, do the same thing and, and not even mention a word, which I understand. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think, you know, it's, a, it's ultimately if people intentionally taking someone else's idea and present it on their own, uh, I think they, they know innerly. And I think that's enough punishment. <laughs> anything else as my you know yoga teacher way of looking at things and uh, yeah uh, i'd say you know that, that that's a really good question though because uh when everything you know everything we produce is public property in a sense you know it's on the public platform uh, there's no way to kind of uh regulate it or policing which is part of the beauty you know people can do all sorts of things, you know, I don't know whether you've seen those uh, reaction videos that basically people sitting there watching someone else's content and, and that's a form of content as well. So, you know, it, it uh, gets, it gets very, uh, iterative. <laughs> I mean, so now, now do we have a reaction video to the reaction video? Yeah, I mean, I've many, seen those. Have, have you seen these videos where people are like, let me show you how much money I made on this <gasps> video. And then, and then they'll do like, a week later, they're like, let me show you how much money I made doing the video on how much money I made doing that video. Oh, dear. And yeah. It's you know, you, you get slippery slope. <sighs> yes. Um, but I, I, you're, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that I get to speak to you because for a lot of times, you know, being a content creator is a lonely place. And also being on keto can be a lonely place. And, uh, you know, um, so it, it's good to talk to someone who's like sane, who's not getting sucked in, in this crazy, you know, online platform completely. So um, I'm, I'm really grateful for your existence. Well, um, thank you. And the feeling is mutual. Like I said, before we went, <laughs> uh, went live, you know, any influencer is going to have a shared set of experiences with other influencers. And the further you drill down into a niche like keto, for example, we are going to experience very similar things. We have viewers that overlap. We're going to get questions that overlap. We're going to have experiences on the social media platforms that are identical to one another that no one else understands, but us. So, it is. It is good, and it is therapeutic for us to get together from time to time. And it's and, kind of sanity up. check. So yeah, absolutely, it's a healthy thing to do. And I hope you know we're we're do it do this again um, very soon. And um, do you have some final words for for the viewers? No, I'm just. I'm grateful that for all the folks that tuned in and stuck around. I mean, I yes, uh, three hours. We're hitting three hours. So we're still here. Um, yes, you know, I. I I'm appreciative of, you know, I, I don't know how much uh, overlap we have between viewers. I'm certainly seeing a lot of, a lot of the same names. So um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Uh, just like I say, whenever I do my podcast that uh, you took a little bit out of a little bit of time out of your day to, to spend with a knucklehead like me. And um, <laughs> I, I do, it means the world to me. So thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for um, people who have, um, if you made it so far, congratulations, you're special. And uh, we like you. <laughs> I, I think I can speak for Steve on that one. So thank you very much, uh, very much everyone. And hopefully we can do this again soon. And uh, so um, have a great morning, afternoon, <laughs> or good night. Thank you so much. Thank All you, right. everyone. Bye.
So I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as Fan and I did. I will include a link to Heavenly Fan's channel down below in the description. If you're not familiar with her, she is vegan keto. So you're not going to find any meat-based recipes, but you're certainly going to find a lot of desserts, side dishes, etc. that you can incorporate into your keto meal plan. And as I said at the end of our conversation, I really truly do appreciate all of you that tune in on a regular basis just to hear me talk or make a recipe or do a product review, whatever. You guys, you're the ones that keep this channel going. You're the ones that keep me going. So thank you. Thanks for watching.